repair my time machine. Chemistry is so exciting, but you have to be so careful with it. You can see that the stirring rod and beaker are highlighted in red. You are really close, but please try a little bit harder. You are really close, but please try a little bit harder. Great! Use the glass rod to stir the solution. Lastly, put the egg in it. Great! The egg is lighter than the leech, and at the same time heavier than the water, and that's why the egg floats on it. Now you know that it's difficult to drown in salt water. That's why you can easily spend your holiday by the Dead Sea, even if you can't swim. Can you see how easy it is? You've just done your first real experiment, and you're ready to start your adventure with the fascinating world of chemistry. Good luck! Welcome! Today we will examine the conduction of electricity through solutions. Some very electrifying experiments are waiting for us. We will check what solutions conduct electricity. We will use a battery as a source of electricity. We will construct an electrical circuit composed of a bulb, two graphite electrodes and our solutions. Let's start! Let's see what happens when we dip electrodes in distilled water. Distilled water, water which thanks to distillation does not contain mineral salts or most other substances which contaminate it, as you can see, does not conduct electricity. It is used everywhere a very high purity of water is required, car batteries or ions. Now instead of distilled water, I will use tap water. Water which flows out of our tap, as well as so-called mineral water, contains substances which dissolved in it, including salts. And unlike distilled water, it conducts electricity. Now it is time for alkaline solutions. Let's start with sodium hydroxide solution. A sodium hydroxide solution conducts electricity. Substances which exhibit such properties are called electrolytes. Let's move on to acids. Let's connect hydrochloric acid solution to our simple electricity circuit. Yes, hydrochloric acid is an acid that you have in your stomach. This solution needs to be an electrolyte. Can you see a shining bulb? Now let's try with sulfuric acid solution. You have just proved that aqueous solutions of acid conduct electricity. We can therefore include them in the group of electrolytes. Particles of acids undergo dissociation because of water. Acids are therefore, according to Mr. Arrhenius's theory, such substances which dissociate in water solutions into cations H+, and anions of acid radical. We will still have fun with salt solutions. 
We shall start with a sodium chloride solution. Bulb has lit again, so it is also an electrolyte solution. 0.9% sodium chloride solution is called physiological liquid, saline. It is used in medicine for irrigation and supplementing deficiency of electrolytes, and also as a liquid to wash eyes or wounds. Let's see if the same will happen with the solution of sulphate magnesium. Hydrated magnesium sulphate is commonly known as bitter salt or English salt. It was in fact mined in the United Kingdom, Epsom, and sold as a medicine with laxative properties. You might have noticed that after the graphite electrodes are immersed in salt solutions, we observe the illumination of the light bulbs in our test kit. Salts which dissolve in water conduct electricity as a result of the electrolytic dissociation they undergo. As you can see, only distilled water does not conduct electricity. The remaining solutions had the properties of electrolytes. We are in front of electrifying chapter of chemistry. We will check which solids conduct electricity. As a source of electric current, we will use the battery. We will build an electrical circuit consisting also of a bulb of our tested substance. Let's start. Let's see what happens when we connect one of our elements to our circuit. Choose one. Copper is a metal with very good thermal and electrical conductivity. Have you ever seen an electric copper cable? Now you know why it's produced out of this material. Let's see now. How will another element behave? Aluminium is also electrically conductive. Its symbol is AL. Aluminium foil used in the kitchen is produced from it. Aluminium alloys, because of their lightweight, have been widely used. They are found in body parts, vehicle motors, and even in parts of aircraft or spacecraft. Let's connect one more element to the set. Great! The bulb has shined a light again. Zinc is a metal that is also a conductor. In the air, however, it passivates. Nowadays, zinc is mainly used for coating steel plates. This is called galvanized steel, which is resistant to corrosion. Now let's check another element. Pure iron is a shiny, silvery, very hard and relatively refractory metal that conducts electricity. Let's see now. How will another element behave? Wood is a typical non-metal. It does not conduct electricity. The light bulb will not lit. Let's see now. How will another element behave? The spoon is made of plastic material, commonly known as polymer. This is because it is built of many poly recurring units, monomer units. Most plastics are insulators, that is, they do not conduct electric current. One more element left, check it. Ceramic tiles, which are often used for interior decoration, such as in a bathroom or kitchen, are made of ceramic material. This material is an insulator that does not conduct electricity which is why the light bulb will not light. Pottery is often how we call traditional products obtained by firing properly prepared clay. These products also do not conduct electricity. As you can see, my helper, substances can be divided into those that conduct electricity, conductor, and those that do not conduct electricity, insulators. Metals belong to the first group, 